So I just made the cup of coffee. This is the one that I make every single time before I film and then inevitably completely forget about. Cheers. All right, so today we're gonna to be talking about my top tips for solo travel. If you're new here, my name's Taylor. I've been permanently on the road and traveling for the last almost 11 months now, doing you know the work remote, nomad living thing, whatever you wanna call it, by myself. I've been traveling to different cities within the US and then different countries. I'm currently in the US right now, but I'm gonna be going abroad again for a few months. I've lived in other countries at different points in my life and I've always been a big fan of solo travel. I've been doing a solo travel since my early 20s. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about the benefits of solo travel and then my top tips for solo travel if this is something you're considering doing. I think like one of the main reasons and kind of main incentives to travel by yourself is that you're not waiting around on other people's schedules. And if you're someone who wants to see the world and wants to see a bunch of different places and experience different people and different cultures, it's hard to line up schedules with certain people, to find people to travel with. I have so many places that I want to see in the world and if I was waiting around for people to go travel with, I quite literally would never see a lot of the places on my list in my lifetime. If you think about how many places you really want to see and then how many trips you're averaging per year, maybe just do the math. You also have the flexibility to see what you want to see and to change plans. When you're traveling with someone, I have done like three week long trips with friends in Europe. Obviously there are other people on the trip, so you have to make decisions together. Whereas when you're traveling by yourself, if I don't feel like going on a hike that day, I can change my plans. If I wanna leave a city early, I can do that. If I want to extend my stay, I can do that. It's literally just up to you. So if you don't wanna do something, you don't have to do it. Solo travel really builds your confidence and shows you what you are capable of. You will be put in certain situations where you it might be challenging, you might have to figure it out. You likely go through ups and downs and different phases if you're doing travel by yourself, which we'll get into. But besides just the benefits of travel overall, being exposed to different cultures and places, places and people and religions and languages and just everything you're learning and experiencing, doing it on your own is like a whole other level. You also have to learn to enjoy your own company. There's a lot of times where you'll be by yourself, whether it's eating a meal or on a long bus ride or just sometimes a couple days at a time, you have to learn to enjoy your own company. I've had a lot of just good like introspective <laughs> thoughts and moments during solo travel that I don't think I would have had not doing that because you're kind of like forced to just be in your own thoughts. Those things stick with you and if you're with someone you're usually kind of talking all the time and then lastly you realize that and this is travel in general as well but the world isn't as scary of a place as you might think. If you've never traveled abroad or if you've never traveled solo once you kind of just dive in and do it, you'll realize that humans are humans. Being thrown into certain situations and having to figure it out, you realize that if you're respectful and you're open, most people wanna help and they want to share their culture and their home with you. So now we're gonna go into the tips and talk about the things that maybe you're concerned about and that hopefully will help you out if you are planning a solo trip or thinking about it. So number one, safety. I feel like this is the biggest question mark people have with solo travel, especially being a woman. I can say that I have felt more unsafe a lot of the times in the US in certain situations than I have abroad. Bad things can happen literally anywhere and it's kind of ironic because especially right now, like when I'm, abroad talking to people. People don't want to visit the US right now. There's concerns about a lot of things happening in the US right now that a lot of people don't feel safe traveling here. So that's just an interesting perspective to look at. You might feel like your home is safer because it's what you're used to and it's what you're comfortable with. I've felt safer in the Middle East by myself in Jordan than I ever have felt in the US. So you just have to keep an open mind and also be aware that bad things can happen anywhere. I think the key is don't do anything that you wouldn't do normally. Regardless of where you are in the world, I never let my guard down as a woman, never let my guard down no matter where I am. Even if I'm you know, walking at 6 p.m. at night in a neighborhood, I'm always looking. And I basically just don't do things alone that I wouldn't do here. But especially if you're traveling in another country and you don't know the language or you're not sure what kind of like the customs are yet. Always just be aware, be on kind of more like high alert. Because you're by yourself, you are your guardian. So you have to be on lookout for yourself at all times. Even if you think like maybe this is okay, just don't do it. Don't do it, don't worry about saying no to him. Whatever situation you're in, 
don't be afraid to say no. I feel like women are kind of like, and I've gotten this question from you guys, you're like afraid to be rude or to look stupid or whatever. If you're in a sketchy situation, remove yourself from the situation. Nothing is more important than your safety. Don't feel bad. You're literally never gonna see the person again. And that can mean the difference between you being in a really sketchy, horrible situation or you being completely safe. Don't walk alone at night. I don't do that in the US by myself. I don't do that in other places. If it's a big city, actually, that feels fine to me. Like if I'm in New York City and it's a busy street, cities are actually better to walk alone at night, I feel, because it's really bright. There's a lot of people around. I'm like extra cautious with this. Never walk outside if it feels like a little bit sketchy to me. I only do it if there's a lot of people around and if it feels like very lively and safe. If you're traveling by yourself before you start drinking, think about how you're getting home that night. Have a plan. Don't force yourself into a situation where you're walking drunk by yourself at night. A tip that is so useful and that I've done for years now is download the Google Maps maps offline. So on your phone, you can actually go to a specific city, type in the name of the city, and then you scroll over and you hit download. And that will download the map so that you don't have to be connected to Wi-Fi. You don't have to have service. You can completely use maps, type in everything. It works perfectly while being offline. And that is such a game changer because if you're in a place that you're not familiar with and your service cuts out or you're in like an emergency situation, you can still get around and figure out how to get to where you need to be. And along with that, always carry a charger or an external battery pack because a lot of times your phone is your lifeline. Get an international phone plan. I freaking love T-Mobile because I get free international data. When I land in a new country, I just turn on my phone like usual. It connects to like the local carrier. I have service, I can text, I can get around without Wi-Fi. It's literally like I'm using data here. I don't have to worry about getting a local SIM card and doing all this stuff. It's just like one less step and it's, Super convenient, love T-Mobile for that reason. One thing I do, no matter where I'm going, even if it's in the US, is I always tell people where I'm going. I tell my parents exactly where I'm staying, the address, I'll send them like a screenshot, I'll give them a phone number, let them know if it changes. Also along with that, turn on Find My Friends, I have my location on so I can see my parents' location and they can see mine at all times. So if I'm ever not responding, you know, my mom can see where I am. And along with that, WhatsApp is really great because not only is that a good way to communicate with people when you're in different countries, but also you can have your last scene on there. When you're by yourself, there are certain things that you have to be more aware of. We talked about some of the safety stuff, but try to blend in and look comfortable. Even if you aren't comfortable, even if you're confused, even if you're lost, just think about the fact that you don't know when people are watching you. And when you're by yourself, you are more of an easy target. You just are for pickpocketing, for scams, for whatever. Especially if you are you look like a tourist, you maybe you're carrying like a big camera. So one thing I'll do if I am confused or if I am lost, instead of making it like visibly very aware to other people, you never know who's kind of like scoping you out or watching. You don't really want to look like you're super confused or lost. So what I do is I'll actually either walk over to a bench or something and pretend like it was an intentional, like I'm just gonna look on my phone real quick while I wait for my train, like that kind of thing. Just make it look like you're like very confident and know what you're doing and then figure it out like on your phone sitting at the bench instead of kind of like looking around and looking like a tourist and looking like super confused standing in the middle of a train station. Walk with a purpose and act confident even if you're not. One other thing you can do is go into a bathroom, go into a bathroom stall and like figure out where you're going there and then kind of walk out and be like, okay, I know I'm going to platform 11. And then along with that, don't wear flashy things. Don't wear things that are gonna like attract attention, especially depending on the country you're in. You, you just wanna kinda like try to blend in a bit. Anything that's gonna like really attract attention, especially if you're by yourself, I would just like try to avoid. I also don't ever walk with earbuds in. You wanna be aware of your surroundings. So if you have earbuds in, you just can't hear what's happening. You can't hear if someone's yelling at you. If you're in an unfamiliar place, just keep the earbuds out. I also try to make it not known that I'm traveling by myself. Obviously, if you're with a group of other people who are traveling by yourselves or you're in a hostel, like, yeah, that's fine, typically. But if you are in a cab or you're in an Uber by yourself, whoever it is, just remember, you never know people's intentions and it's better, better to be safe than sorry. So if I'm in a taxi and they're asking if I'm like traveling by myself or what I'm doing in that country, I usually just say I'm here with coworkers, I'm traveling for work or uh, you know I'm with like my family who's back at the hotel. I just like make it known that you're not by yourself even
even though you are, because most people are kind of curious when they see someone by themselves. Choosing a destination. So there are definitely better and worse countries to travel solo to. So what I do to decide that, think of a country I wanna go to or a city, wherever it is, and just Google it. Just Google, you know, solo travel Costa Rica. I did that the other day and I found that Costa Rica is one of the best places to solo travel. Who knew? That's not somewhere that immediately I would just think of for solo travel. So you can just do research, look up the best countries for solo travel. I just try to stick with kind of cities. I'm not really doing remote trips by myself. I still wanna see a lot of remote places. So if I was with someone, I would feel better about that. My next tip is if you're new to traveling solo, start small. You don't need to like, dive all in and do your first solo trip in like Thailand for three weeks. You know, you can just start small, go somewhere in your home country, just go somewhere a few hours away and take a weekend trip by yourself. Everyone's comfort zone is different. So like push yourself a little bit, you know, but don't just like dive off the deep end and then taint your entire experience because of that. Don't psych yourself out about it. Just start small. Once you actually get there though and get to the country or get to the place you're going, you'll be like, oh, okay. I got this. A lot of times it's like more just like thinking about it in your head and then when you actually do something, you'll realize it's not a big deal. Staying busy and overcoming loneliness. So I think this is one of the biggest things that people kind of worry about when they travel solo is if you're gonna be lonely or how are you gonna meet people? How do you eat by yourself? Just all these things that maybe feel weird to do when you're in your own city that you live in. But when you're traveling, it's a whole other story. So let's start out with how to meet people. I think the number one best way to meet people when you're traveling solo is definitely staying in hostels. I'm not gonna lie. I stayed in a couple hostels recently and I'm 30. I did feel like it skewed a bit younger, but I also saw some older people there. So I just think it depends. But as far as like meeting people and going out and doing all that, like it definitely felt like it was kind of more early to mid twenties, but that probably depends on the country and depends on where you are in the hostel you're staying at. But I can say from experience, like in the past, those were some of the best memories I have ever had in my entire life was staying in hostels, meeting people. I actually met one of my boyfriends at the time through a hostel and some friends that I still keep in touch with. And if I'm in their country, I will definitely reach out. It's just such a unique and cool environment. I feel like everyone should do in their lifetime, especially if you're in your 20s, just because I feel like that's like the ideal time to do it. But if you aren't, or if you're in your 30s or whatever, and you've never done it, like definitely don't let this stop you from doing it. But the thing with hostels is they usually organize different events. So like every single night of the week, they'll be like, let's cook dinner together, or we're going on a walking tour, or we're going to the club. Most people in hostels are trying to meet people. They wanna make friends, so it's like you're in a situation, kinda like college, freshman year of college, where everyone's trying to make friends. So it's just really easy because you're all in the same place. If you are closer to my age or maybe older, I think food tours and walking tours have been a great way to meet people and people around my age. It seems like a lot of people are doing that. If you're solo traveling and you're in your 30s, doing food tours through Airbnb experiences or walking tours. I also book through Get Your Guide. That's in a lot of different countries. And I just did a handful of those in other countries. And almost on every tour, I ended up exchanging numbers with someone at the end. That's a good way to have something social to do and to also potentially meet other solo travelers. On one of my walking tours I did in Barcelona, I think there were literally five or six of us that were all solo travelers. So that's just super cool, just working remote. And since COVID, that is something that's changed. There's just so many more people working remote. Another great way to meet people and keep busy is dating. If you're single, dating in other countries by using different dating apps is a great way to meet people. Obviously, be safe. Don't do what you wouldn't do here. But it's just a fun way to go have something to do and eat somewhere new and meet someone and get like a local perspective on things as well. Another great way to meet people and just to have resources are Facebook groups. There are a lot of different ones just for solo women travelers. I've seen some amazing things like happen through these Facebook groups where maybe someone gets in a sketchy situation and doesn't know anyone in that country. They'll like post on the Facebook group and other women will help them out and get them out of the situation. You can just reach out on the Facebook group. There's so many good resources and tips, just like a good thing to have access to. So definitely join those Facebook groups before you travel. And then just accepting that loneliness is gonna be inevitable. Like at some points you will feel lonely. Typically with solo travel, depending on how long you're doing it or if you're not used to being by yourself or if you're more extroverted. I'm an extroverted introvert. So like I'm actually really fine spending like, like right now I'm totally by myself for like for a week and I'm 
completely fine with it. But then I go through phases where, especially if I'm abroad, where I feel like I want to be like doing something or going out or experiencing it. I definitely have felt lonely at certain times. I think that's just part of it. I was at my low, I would say in Boston when I was there for three weeks by myself and didn't know anyone. That was like a major low of my whole thing. I talked about that in other videos. There are definitely points throughout the last 11 months. I just think you have to like accept that it's part of solo travel, but it's also part of life. Like if you think about living in your hometown, I'm sure there are points throughout the month where maybe you feel a little lonely or you wish you had someone to go do something with or other people have plans. It's like, it's the same kind of thing. You might just feel like you're more isolated because you're in another country or a place where you don't know people, but it's the same kind of feeling. And I think you just have to view it as temporary and part of the process and there are good and bad days there are ups and downs there are some days where like you'll be totally high on life and like be so happy that you did it and there are other days where you might be like questioning your choices or you might just feel a little bit low and that's totally normal look at the glass half full and make tomorrow a really good day and something i do to kind of combat the loneliness is i pre-book things and i keep in mind like how often i really want to do social things for me i don't like doing social things Every single day I do like need a break between that. And so I'll kind of plan it where usually like the day after I get in or within the first couple days, I'll do something social to get like a good lay of the land, whether it's a walking tour or a food tour, just something that gives you like good, you know, history and background of the place, but that you can also meet people. Or if you are staying in a hostel, you know, that's obviously like an easy in, you'll be happy you did it when you actually are on it and meeting people and you'll realize like, oh, everyone is in the exact same situation I'm in. Then for me, I'll kind of like space it out where I have a day or two by myself and then maybe I'll plan a date or I'll do another tour. If you put yourself out there, you usually will meet people and there are other people doing the exact same thing you're doing. It's not this like crazy revolutionary thing to solo travel and that gets me into my next point, which this is something that a lot of people brought up on Instagram and I do hear this a lot, but it always shocks me. So this actually really interests me because I have never felt that it was like lame to solo travel. I've always felt that it's like very empowering and cool to solo travel because it is. And like whenever you do solo travel, people aren't looking at you like, oh my God, you, you're by yourself. Like you don't have anyone to do this with. No, usually people are like, whoa, that's cool. I don't know if I could do that or I've thought about that. That's like what I've heard from you guys is like, how do you not care what people think about you solo traveling or how do you, and I'm like, that's so interesting because I literally have never felt like it's a weird thing to do. The response that I've gotten from people in general is always like, wow, that's super cool. I want to do that. How do you do it? Exactly like this video. Like there's a lot of people who want to do it. So I think just try to like get the idea out of your head that it's like a weird thing to do because it's really not. It's more empowering than anything. I don't know if that just made sense at all. There's obviously certain things with solo travel where you know, when you think about doing things by yourself, maybe it might feel kind of weird or uncomfortable like eating by yourself. It's just something you get used to. And it's funny because if you think about your reaction to seeing someone eating by yourself, me personally, either A, I'll try to talk to them or B, I'm just like, cool, good for you. Another solo traveler, that's awesome. I never feel like it's like a weird thing to be eating by myself. Yes, you have to like entertain yourself and whatever, but no one is actually looking at you. No one cares. They're all in their own conversations. They're all doing their own thing. But you can read a book or you can go on your phone or you can just people watch, whatever. I think it's just one of those things that if you're worried about like how people are gonna think of you solo traveling, I just think that's probably like more of like a reflection of how you feel internally about being by yourself not to get super deep on you, but yeah, solo travel is really cool. I admire other people who do it. I think it's just good at some points to take some time for yourself, just enjoying your own company and learning how to do that. Always carry copies of your important documents. I have copies on my computer and then also physical copies of all the important documents, just in case something happens and it gets lost or stolen, you always have a backup. Cash and credit cards. No matter where I'm going, I always carry a little cash, the local currency with me. You can do that ahead of time. You can actually just order the local currency at your bank, Chase, Bank of America, wherever you can just order the cash and then pick it up if you don't want to deal with it and pay for the ATM fees and all that kind of stuff when you land in the airport. Or if you don't want to do that, you can just do it when you get there. But I always carry a little bit of cash and with my cash, I put it in different places because you don't want to have 
all of your cash in your backpack. And if your backpack gets stolen, then that has all of your credit cards in it and all of your cash. I always disperse everything, both cash and cards. So I have a few different cards. I have my travel credit cards and I have just like debit cards and bank cards. So I always make sure I have, you know, enough money in my debit card account so that if my credit cards get stolen, I can use my debit cards. I always keep them in different areas. And usually if I'm in a place with a safe in it, that's where I'll store my passport and backup like credit cards cards just in case. I don't bring my passport with me out and about. You really only need your passport in most situations to check into a hotel abroad, to go through the airport and to like actually get in the country or go through border crossings. You know, of course there are situations where you can get it stolen in your Airbnb or get it stolen when you're at a train station and things like that. So it definitely does happen. But when you can, I just personally keep it in a safe or keep it kind of hidden away and not on me in case my purse gets stolen. Get travel health insurance. So when I use this through worldnomads.com, especially if you're someone who has existing health issues like I do, that's super important to me because if I need to use the emergency room somewhere or a situation comes up, I have health insurance. But even if you're perfectly healthy, accidents happen and it's just, it's better safe than sorry. So just get health insurance. Okay, kind of a basic one is packing light. I put that in quotes because I feel like that means different things to different people. Some people can just have a backpack and go around. And personally, I can't carry that on my back. So I find like a rolling suitcase easier, but also I just have, I mean, you saw my recent pack with me video. I have a ton of shit because I film. Anyways, just think about the fact that you're gonna be hauling everything by yourself and there are dirt roads, cobblestone roads, situations where you're gonna need to get your bags up in a train. It's just easier if you're traveling light. Something you also have to think about is when you're traveling with someone, there are a lot of situations where it's like really nice to be able to just leave your bags and be like, hey, can you watch these real quick while I run to the bathroom? There are some situations where you're like, oh shit, I have all this, I have all these suitcases with me right now. I have to bring all these with me and you're hauling it into the bathroom. Think about all those situations where it is much easier if you have less stuff. You don't have to have it all figured out beforehand. You don't need to go crazy with like, stressing yourself out about every small detail. Obviously the basics, where you're staying, transportation, how you're getting around, those kind of things, like the currency, the basics you need to know, the cultural norms, what to wear, that kind of stuff, research beforehand. But a lot of the stuff you'll just figure out and you don't need to like stress yourself out or get like overly anxious about all these small details, especially if you've never done it before. You'll just, you'll figure it out. The reason why I don't stress out about solo travel, I've realized is because no matter where you are in the world, pretty much, unless you're like in a desert by yourself, right? Like if you're just in a city, you can always figure it out. Think about the fact that people live there in that city year round, okay? They live in that country. If you ever needed some kind of help, if you got in a situation, there is a way to figure it out. Don't go crazy, like psyching yourself out with all these things. Just plan the basics and then go and you'll figure it out. And then last, I think this is just like something in life in general, but especially with solo travel, just follow your gut. Usually your gut is right. Like I said, no matter what, if you are afraid of looking rude or dumb or whatever, just do it. Solo travel is not the time to risk it. Those are all of my tips for solo travel, but I hope this was helpful for you. You got this. Ladies, we can do this, okay? For me, I really enjoy solo travel and the benefits of it way outweigh some of the lows that you might feel or things that might come up for you. So just keep that in mind. It's just such a good way to learn about yourself and grow and push yourself. And I hope that this encourages you to try some traveling by yourself. But I love you guys. Thanks for watching. See you in my next video. Bye. And I had two sips of the coffee. <laughs> I'll die. This is gonna be an iced coffee at this point.